Hello and welcome to Mayhem with your host, May May. Today I want to talk about the anatomy of a decision, about thinking with your gut. You know what needs to be done, let's be frank. You already know what decision you're going to make, you already know what you're going to do. But you fight with yourself. You fight, you're like, okay, well, this decision is what I want to do, but I can't do it because I don't have money. I can't do it because I'm not healthy enough. I can't do it because of this. I can't do it because of that. I cannot do it. And so you spend all of this time wishy-washy, one way or another, fighting with yourself, fighting with everything around you, when you know when you've got what needs to be done. Um, there's a moment, there's always a moment when you look at yourself and you're like, okay, I give in. I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow my gut. And then things start working out for you. Things start falling into place. Things start happening to make it to where you can do this and this is something that is viable in your life. Um, it's happened for me a couple of times. I was in an unhappy marriage and I was wishy-washy because... While my marriage was unhappy, I liked the dude. We got along. We He was a good dad. He, um, but together we made good money and we could afford the lifestyle that we were living. We both had new vehicles. We both had this nice house. We had gotten things and security together. And by walking away from the marriage, I'm walking away from all of that. And I was wishy-washy for six months. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And then one day, I remember so clearly, I was sitting in my car, <laughs> driving, and I knew. I knew. It was just like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop playing. I'm going to stop doing all of this. I'm just going to be like, okay, it's done. I'm done. I'm over it. And then I made arrangements to do the rest. And I figured the rest out as I went. But that one moment where I'm like, okay, this is what's going to happen, it's like this heavy weight was lifted off my shoulders because the indecisiveness had been weighing me down, literally weighing me down, and I couldn't see through it. And so when I made the decision, it was gone, and it was like, whoa, it was like waking up again. It happened again when I decided to leave my last job. It was like everything was weighing me down. Every single little piece of this was weighing me down, and then I was in the shower, and I thought, what would my life look like if I left? What would my life look like if I did this? And the weight lifted. It was like, this is something that I have to do. Because that weight lifting told me exactly what I needed to do. It was going to be hard. That decision turned out to be the number one hardest decision of my life that I have ever, ever, ever made. But it was absolutely the decision that I needed to make. Because after that, things started falling into place for me. I got... Another job relatively quickly, I figured all of these other things out. All of which has come to say that I have made another decision, um, another big decision that's gonna change our lives. It's going to change everything. And I don't know if it's being stuck at home with quarantine, I don't know what's going on with my head, but I feel the weight has lifted because I've made this decision. Um, I'm not happy now. I feel like my heart has no roots. I feel unearthed and, you know, I've watched, I've spent the past year watching Tisa and her family and I have watched the respect, the kindness, the, um, the devotion that they have to each other and it is the most beautiful thing in the world. And it's been also through my time of grieving where I have decided to cut my family out of my life my family in Arizona out of my life. Um, so watching her and the devotion and the respect and everything that they have together has been an eye-opening experience for me because I didn't know that that's something that family could have, even though she has the biggest family ever. She has a huge family. And it was it's so beautiful watching them together and seeing them interact and seeing, like, one of her best friends is her cousin. And I didn't have any cousins growing up. I have nothing like that. For some people, cousins are your best friends. And for me, it's not. It's foreign. It's a foreign word because I don't understand what it means to have a cousin. Except I do. I have cousins. My kids have cousins that are their age. 
um, I have a huge, massive family that I have always been welcoming, but because I live in Phoenix and they're in Colorado, I can't be a part of it. I feel separate. I feel unhinged. And by saying goodbye to my Arizona family, it's brought up my heart out of the ground and it's like, I need some place to put my heart, to let it grow roots again. And I'm feeling unearthed here. And um, I want my children to understand the term cousin the way Tisa does. And to be quite honest, my entire life, I have felt the siren song of Denver. Every time I go there, I don't want to leave. I feel at home. Colors are brighter. It is the weirdest thing. I cross the border into Colorado and everything is better. Um, it's like my heart is there. And so I'm, I'm going to move. I'm going to take my kids. I want them to be raised the rest of their way with their cousins in Colorado. I want to be a part of the family, but I want to do it on my terms. I want to go and I don't want to have to depend on anybody when I get there. So I have a lot of work ahead of me. I have a lot of work to do. I have to find a job, see if my job can transfer. I have to find a place for us to stay. I have a lot of work. But this feels right. This feels like the next move in my life that I have to do. I have to take this move. And um, the decision's been made. And I know that this decision has been playing on my heart a lot longer than any other decision I've ever had because I've always felt unhinged. I've always felt on earth where I'm at and um, family helps root you they help bound you to a place and now that my family is not here anymore I am feeling on earth and, and physically I'm feeling anxious and upset and I just want to be somewhere where I have people I have my people and um, I want my kids to know that too and I want my kids to understand what it means to have a cousin so yeah, I'm, I'm calling. In a year from now, I want to be there. I want to be there. I want my kids to be in high school there. I want, I want to be grounded and feel more grounded. Um, so I want to manifest that. And I know that it's going to happen. And I know that I'm going to get there. And I'm very grateful to that. So this is my call to manifestation and to getting it done. And I'm very grateful that I have the life that I have right now, and I'm very grateful that everything that has come to me and everything that has happened in the past year has happened, and I am very grateful moving forward that our lives are going to be changed because I'm following my gut, I'm following my heart, and I'm following what feels right as my next step. So the book I want to talk about today is um, <laughs> Bird Box. I mean, this is like an appropriate book because we're all stuck at home. And all of this that I just said could completely be a pipe dream made up of quarantine, but I don't, it feels right. It feels deeper than that. Um, and I do believe that quarantine is truly changing people's lives in the same way that it has changed mine. So I wanted to talk about Bird Box mainly because this is a book about a woman who makes a decision. She knows she's been living in this house for four years and she knows that there's hope. She knows that there's a better place for her and her kids out there. She knows it. She has known it for four years and she has lived with this for four years being like, I should go. I should do this. This should be something that me and my kids need to do. We need to do this. We need to go for four years. And this entire book is about the moment that she makes that decision. The moment that she's like, okay, we're going to go. There's nothing left for us here. We have to leave. And um, I think if there's any book that could be about a decision, it's this one. Because the aftermath that that decision could be devastating for her and her kids. It could be the greatest thing that ever happened to them. But she doesn't know that. All she knows is she made this decision and now she has to run with it. Um, it's a short book. I read it in like a day. It's really, it'll get in your head and make you think for a very long time afterwards. And my son got spoilers from the end of the book from his friends and he still talks about it. So it's that kind of book. And I know that there's a movie out about it, but honestly, the movie and the book are pretty, pretty different. There's a lot of different things that happen in the movie that didn't happen in the book and vice versa. Um, it's a good read. So that's my recommendation for this week. 
and follow your heart, follow your gut. And it might feel like this is something that can't happen, that you can't do, but don't let that negativity into your heart. Just know that this is going to happen and that your heart is saying what it wants. And if your heart is saying it, there's going to be a way open for you. So thank you so much. And I appreciate you listening. And I hope that everybody's being safe out there. And don't drink Lysol. All right. Have a good afternoon.